Hello, class. Hello, class. <laughs> <laughs> I think that we've done that a dozen times now. It doesn't get old. It doesn't get old. <laughs> So today's RV newbie class is uh, take the fear out of RV driving, which is it's impossible for us to be able to do that. But hopefully we'll be able to share some tips with you, give you some good constructive advice. Um, and I'm going to first start off by telling you a story, guys. Um, I never imagined that so many people did not know how to drive RVs until we owned an RV park. Now, when people come into Thunder Canyon, me and my buddy Mark are measuring everybody out. We're keeping a real close time. We're seeing how wide they go. And you just can't imagine how many people are out in the road and they really don't know how to drive an RV. And, and it's not a judgment it's in not like a, a judgment. critical ha-ha kind of thing. It's more an alerted concern. It's a serious alerted concern because we are there's a lot of RVers out there that don't know how to properly carry the rig. And these rigs can be 20, 30 tons, you guys. Yeah. And so it's so important. I am going to tell you a quick story about a girl. I'm going to leave her name out of it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, but we had somebody pull into Thunder Canyon about a week ago. Um, they pulled in in an old rig. I believe it was a 1999 Class A. Probably weighed 22 tons, 23 tons. It was a big rig. She was she was carrying um, a, 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 a car with flatbed trailer. And when she pulled in, we noticed right away that uh, only one of her tires had straps. Um, she had no safety chains on at all on the trailer. Um, she had one strap on the front wheel that was holding that car down and nothing left. Apparently, this is bad, people. This is really bad. <laughs> <laughs> so I started to ask her to back up to let some people through go past her so we get the gate open and gets you know the traffic by her and it was just scary as heck you guys i'm in back and i'm trying to back her up and all of a sudden i say stop because she's about to jackknife it and she punches it punches it forward and starts heading at these two other guys that were trying to get out of the way of her um you know right then it started to become a little bit more serious yeah um we were a little bit afraid wasn't sure if she was on anything weren't sure if yeah. she was drinking um, but it was scary. Yeah. And so oh, by, about five guys met up there and we teamed up to bring her in. I asked her if I could drive her rig to parking because I was still, again, was really concerned um, and she would not allow me to. So we started bringing her in and right away there was a lot of screaming. Every direction that she was given, she did the exact opposite she of. She just wasn't listening to anything we said. And we were very, very nervous about this whole thing. And to be quite frank, that night we were with her five guys for about four hours, right? 20 man hours trying to help this woman set up. She decided that she was going to jump into RV life and then drive to Thunder Canyon and have us do everything for her. Um, I insisted at a certain point that I was getting in her rig. Yeah. I would not let her park this rig anymore after she missed the fifth time. Um, and she was really embarrassed because the inside. So I get inside the rig. She's missing mirrors, because, and she said a semi-truck hit her on the way Which here. Which is only going to make you drive worse if you don't have your rear view mirrors. Right. The inside was a catastrophe from things falling all over the place. This woman had never driven a Class A before in her life. This was her first trip, and she had driven, I believe it was 12 hours. Yeah. Right? And so it's so, so, so important. I really believe, after knowing what I know about the RV industry now uh in rv is that everybody should um should it should be a license there really truly should be a something even if it's a half a cdl guys they make you get a license to fly a drone now yeah and think about a drone i mean yeah that can hurt somebody with over their heads but, but you're it, talking about 13 20 25 30 tons of vehicle on a highway and it just it really puts the public at danger and people they don't take it too serious how serious it is with that said there are a lot of people that are afraid yeah. um, to drive and it's, go ahead, you go. Well, okay. Apparently we struck a nerve because we talked about how, you know, RV driving can be scary. When I first drove the RV for the first time, I was scared. There's a terrified picture of me on this, on this thumbnail. And it's like, we said two things. Number one, it's okay that it's scary. Let's call it what it is. It's intimidating. And number two, anyone that says it's easy and it's just like driving a car, I 
I don't want to hear what you got to say. It's just not. It's not like driving a car. The the principles at play are, are different. The rules, how you stop, how you're going to drive is going to be different. And apparently that struck a nerve. But I think we need to address things as they are, not as we wish they were. And I think like I feel bad because guys are supposed to, generally speaking, supposed to do the driving. They're supposed to like do all this manly stuff. Right. And you're not supposed to be afraid of it. Like when a scary big old spider comes into the house, like it's his job to get the spider, not mine. And I don't even care if he's afraid because I just want the spider out. And this is kind of like, you know, a little bit more important than the big scary spider. But the point being that we wanted to bring solutions to help it be less scary. You know what I mean? It's like, what can we do? that'll give practical, tangible advice. And so unfortunately I had to get all the information out of John's brain though, because he's done 99.99997% of the driving. And so for me to teach you guys how to drive an RV would be like, not good. Yeah. And go ahead. No, you go ahead. And one of, one of the things guys, when Mercedes and I were out, I, there's an age difference between us. And whenever I would drive in my rig, I'm pulling a fifth. Well, I've driven construction my whole life. So I'm used to pulling big trailers around. You weren't as afraid of it. The first time I showed up at Camping World to pick up my RV when it was attached, when they had put the fifth wheel in it and it was attached, I was kind of a little bit intimidated. It's kind something else too, <laughs> when you drive um, and you see our daughter in the back seat. Yeah. Sage has traveled all the, the 40, 50,000 miles we've traveled all over the United States. I always, I'm always looking at her in the back seat. Yeah. And so this, these tips are going to help you, number one, settle your mind down so you, have, you build confidence. Yeah. You have confidence in your own abilities. Number one, practice makes perfect, guys. Mm -hmm. You just got to practice at it. Um, it's a great tip to go to a big parking lot on Sunday mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and just do some, you know, do some driving, an old shopping mall um, and just practice, practice, practice. <laughs> I'm laughing because that's one of the tips. He's giving up the curriculum. Oh, so, sorry. No, it's all good. So speaking of the curriculum, guys, make sure that you download the download. And now you know that one of the answers to the question is practice, practice, practice. But we've divided this by we. I've organized this into two sections. The first section is going to be stuff that you can do before you get behind the wheel. And this is all stuff that I believe is going to help you so that you'll be ready and it won't be so scary, you know, because if you can do a couple things ahead of time, it'll be a little bit less scary. Not to say it'll be completely less scary, but you'll feel a little bit more confident. All right. You ready? Yep. Let's go. All right. The first one is to know your vehicle. <laughs> and this takes on a couple of different forms. Um, do you know how tall you are? Because if you don't know your height and there's a bridge and you need to go through it, are you just going <laughs> to do you try to go really fast? Like, what's your strategy? Some here? people will actually take their height and they will they'll um, just uh, uh, stick it somewhere in their inside their truck to yep. make sure that they remember what the height is. Yeah. Again, you don't want to be looking at a bridge from 10 feet away, seeing the height is 11 foot and you're 11 foot nine. Yeah. That's not a good thing. It's, it's, it's so, good. you know, know your rig, know, know the size, know the weight. Yeah. Um, your width. Know your tires, know how yeah. fast you should be going, you know, yeah. um, uh, within your tires rating. Yep. The um, more you know. The more you know, the better you are. Yep. And so this is the first thing you're going to want to do when you first get your rig is get to know it. Know exactly. So if, so if I was to walk up to you in the street and say, you know, how how, how heavy is your rig? You're going to know it. Yeah. How tall is your rig? You're going to know it. How wide is your rig? Yep. You're going to know it. Yeah. And the other thing, too, and this is from the from my female, well, from my, from my perspective with not having driven a dually a lot, I don't know how big the dually is. Like, I feel like I'm in a Cadillac, but I'm not. And you know how, like, the truck bed is, like, high and... And so John was giving me tips like, hey, you use this to know your width. Use This is how you measure how, how much room you got in front. It's like little things like that. Um, I need to familiarize myself with the dually, let alone driving the RV. Hmm. All right. The next one is done. Da, da, da. You got to go to it, baby, so I they know. can see it. I will. <laughs> there it is. Plan your trip. All right. So planning your trip takes on a couple different things as well. It's not just... There have been so many times that the GPS says turn right, but right is going west. And I know definitively we're headed on the east side of the country. There have been so many times that the GPS is slightly wrong. Um, and, and knowing, no, we're headed this direction. We need to go this way. 
takes away half of the fear when you have to make that gut decision, knowing um, what kinds of stops you need to make along the way. I think this is particularly important if you are in a ginormous vehicle that runs on gasoline instead of diesel. So we have some friends, for example, they have a 40 foot class A that runs on gas. Well, John and I have a ginormous fifth wheel, but we run on diesel. We have it easier because we know that we could always go to a truck stop, whereas our friends, they have to plan to make sure that they find a location that gives them gas, but that has the clearances and so forth in their in their trip. Another big thing are breaks or cities. So if you know that you're going to hit a big metropolitan area at rush hour traffic, like knowing that maybe you can make an adjustment so that you don't have to endure that. <laughs> yeah. And it's no fun trying to get gas around a city or inside of a city guys. When you're, when you, when you, um, car you know, when you, when you're hauling a big rig, it's, it's not fun. Nope. And also, um, the more familiar you are with, with general things of the route will be better so that when things don't go as planned, so I'm not saying you have to stick to the plan or, or everything goes wrong. Just have a plan. Yeah, have a plan and get familiar with it. So then if you have to deviate, it's not a big, huge thing. You don't want the whole trip to be one big deviation. Mm -hmm. All right. So now remember, guys, I did 99.9% .9 of the driving, yeah. but Mercedes has completely designed this program. Exactly. So I'm going to just stick with her, even though I'm the one that did all the driving. Well, no. <laughs> Don't make me look bad. You gotta. No, that's why you, you gotta bad. chime in. I don't know how. To, I don't have the gifts to put a curriculum together. I know it's it's kind of funny. So, all right, the next one: maintain your vehicle before you even start driving. Like, if you don't have windshield wiper fluid, and <laughs> that's when you're gonna hit all the bugs in the world. You know, just little things. The tires. Um, it's it's easy enough for things to go wrong. Let alone like making them go wrong because you didn't properly maintain your vehicle. Yeah. Fill your gas up the night before you leave. Oh, that's a big one. You know, go down and get the gas before you connect. We had a fifth wheel, right? So it was just a lot easier. A lot but easier. But again, have a plan, you know, um, have your checklist ready mm -hmm. um, and always make sure you maintain your vehicle. Make sure that it's, it's uh, registered. Everything's up to date. Yeah. And the other thing that we do a lot is um, that uh, the walk arounds, we are big fans of every time we stop, every time we do, you know, anything always walk around. We're also big fans of having someone else walk around. So like he'll do a walk around, I'll do a walk around. I don't even know what I'm looking for, but I'm walking around and looking anyway. Yeah, but you've caught in the past yes. and you catching. So at first I was offended when Mercedes would walk around to check my work. Yeah. I was offended until she found something. <laughs> and then I said, well, thank you. She's my best friend, right? Yeah. She's my teammate. Yeah. So she's got to watch my back. And so we always do a walk around before we leave, just a visual inspection, make sure everything's tight and closed and there's nothing dragging. And then Mercedes will walk around behind me once I get in the truck. Once I get in the truck, I'm getting ready to move the truck. But Mercedes is just doing a quick walk around, making sure that I didn't miss anything. Exactly. Because teamwork makes the dream work. Yeah, it does. It really does. All right, John, you want to go into this? Practice, one? practice, practice. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's true, though. I, I would have. The first time we drove, I drove the RV, like I got on the highway, which if you haven't it, seen that video, you guys it's horrible. don't watch it, please just don't go watch that video. I know I look like such a horrible teacher, but what you don't realize is I was just as terrified as Mercedes was. Yeah. It was a really bad day that yeah, day. I feel so bad for it. And him. I, th on that day, I, <laughs> she had promised me three other times that she was going to finally drive and, and she I always did. ducked out I of it. And always. I said, you are driving today, no matter what. And yeah. It was, it was a bad day to do it. <laughs> it really was. It was, a, it was the train wreck, but, um, mm. but anyways, you know, <laughs> Practice, practice, practice. I do kind of wish that we had played around a little bit. If I could have watched, um, if I could have practiced driving in a big old parking lot with like no one else in sight, that might have helped me a little bit to like feel how the turns are and that sort of thing. Um, straightaways, especially with such a ginormous vehicle, straightaways are great. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> but turns and everything else. That, that Somebody just made a really great point in here, guys. Not only do you do a walk around when you, before you leave the park, but typically when you drive five, 10 miles after getting out, mm -hmm. you should pull over into a walk route around your rig then as well, just to double check everything, make, make sure everything's tight. Well, it's true. And we'll typically do that. And not only do we typically do that within the first couple miles of the journey, but normally we find something that we forgot to do. Yes. Uh, usually it's something inside, like, you There's know, always something. The fridge yep. Or, but there's always something. There's always something.
something we miss. Yep. Yep. All right. Awesome. Um, let's see what's next. Um, do, 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 hitting the buttons. All right. Adjust. This was something you taught me. Don't laugh at me. Okay. Wait, quick. Let's hide it. So maybe they won't notice. <laughs> let's hide it quick. No, I didn't realize. Cause normally with the mirrors, I'm looking to see like out there and he's like, no, you want to see the wheels and like, look at the tires and the, the double mirrors. So you're looking at the bottom tire and then the top. Come on, yeah. come on, help me out. Don't no, I just, I, you know, it's, it, it, adjusting your mirrors is extremely important, guys, <laughs> because the more you relaxed you are, you're the pilot. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's important that you are relaxed as you can be because driving can be stressful. Not for yeah. everybody. Just most RVers are uncomfortable when they drive a big rig. Mm -hmm. So the more, the more comfortable you are, the more relaxed you are, the better off you're going to do. By the end of the day, you won't have that stress in your shoulders because you're holding on to the the wheel like this. This is how Mercedes was the whole time she drove. Yeah. And she was so sore that night because she was, she was, had stressed herself out so bad. Well, and not just that, but somebody else had a really good tip. Save your marriage, have a good friend, teach the wife. So, <laughs> so that video that we have, um, that we're talking about, um, John decided to teach me. And the problem with John teaching me, even though, yes, he's done 99.999999% of all the driving, and he's been driving big trucks for years and he totally knows way more than I do. I don't like him telling me what to do because I feel like he's telling me how to live my life. Yeah. I'm like, don't tell me how to live my life. I try to teach Mercedes how to, you know, yeah. train. It, 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 I don't like him telling me how to do things, even if he knows like more. So my big first, the biggest mistake I made was I decided that I was going to try Mercedes. I should have paid somebody to yeah, teach Mercedes how to drive. Well worth it it would have been a lot. It's not just with driving guys. I can't teach Mercedes anything because she does not like me telling her what to do. I agree with period. that. Period. Right away, she gets grumpy. So no, I agree with that. I agree with that. And a quick thank you to John Rhodes, Scott Westfall, and uh, Chip Bot. We appreciate. Uh, hey, yeah, thanks guys. Thank appreciate you guys. the money. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you guys. All right, so now more, uh, more goodness. Okay, um, turning, tail swing, pivoting, all these things. Okay, can I say something about this before sure, you laugh? Sure. Okay, we had our first RV was a 2018 Sandpiper. Our second RV was a 2020 Sandpiper. Will you? They pivoted differently. They turned differently. The wheel radius was different on the back, and so when you typically with different rigs, you're going to see what's called the tail swing. So from the center of your back wheel to the end of your rig, typically on a fifth wheel, a large fifth wheel, which ours was 41 foot seven, mm -hmm. um, was about 11 and a half feet. And so when you turn that rig, same thing with the class A, when you turn that rig, that tail is swinging out. Mm -hmm. It's going to hit things if you don't pay attention. So not only do you have to pay attention to go wide yeah. when you're driving your rig. You also have to set up in such a way that when you make that turn, you don't kick the mailbox that's right on the side of the road when you make that turn. Yeah, it's it's um it's terribly scary, people. Hey, uh, <laughs> thanks a lot, James, for sharing that video. Yeah, there you go, <laughs> there you go. No, okay, we made we made some good mistakes here and some bad mistakes. One of the best things about that video though was that we I got, got into a fight. Like we were we were at it. And, and we showed it. And I think that's good because people need to see. Well, that, that's just like, the way we do it. We shot the video. It was nothing like we were hoping. Now we could have gone in and edited that video yeah. and put nice music to it. Right. And hit all the times she was crying and the time I was <laughs> freaking out and the time Sage is in the backseat going, Wee! Yeah. you know, but we didn't. We exactly. just we showed it the way that it was. Mm -hmm. um, and boy, I'll tell you what, guys, I got ripped up in that video. If you go in the comments, a lot of people yeah. just said I'm the nastiest, meanest guy. Well, on the he's planet. a horrible teacher. I if just I can't teach to... my wife. I can. I've taught my kids. I've taught five kids how to drive a vehicle, but yeah. not my wife. Yes. I cannot teach my wife anything. Exactly. So <laughs> it's true, though. All right. The next one is mind the weather. Unless you wanted to talk more about pivoting and tail swing. No, okay. I think that's, yeah, I think they get it. Okay, so the weather, okay, even when we were driving that little van, that Class B, I was so surprised at how the wind was just dragging or or like if, if a big car drove past us, I was really surprised at how much the van moved. Um, then when we rented the, or when we borrowed the, the GG Mobile, the Class C, the 30-foot Class C, that one really... 
I mean, there's so many things weather-wise that will impact the RV driving. It can be stressful to drive in a car in the rain, but let alone in an RV, if there's rough weather, you may be better off just postponing your trip and making other arrangements. Every RV is going to drive different guys. Mm -hmm. Even the same model will drive different. Mm -hmm. So it's really important that you, you get used of your RV, get used to driving it. Yeah. That's why if I ever bring Mercedes out to train her again, I will go to an empty parking lot and, and set up cones, <laughs> bring some cones and then pay him a hundred bucks and say, teach her how to drive her. Keep away from me. Yeah, no, but it's, it's true though. And what's really weird about the weather though. I mean, gosh, you know, especially back in the winter, how people were driving so horrible in the snow. Um, can you, can you imagine like adding RV on top of horrible snow and all, all this kind of stuff so the weather is really important um rain can be a big one um remember the tornado when we drove through tornado alley when it was oh that was terrifying um so just watch your weather mind your weather it's yep. going to impact your watch your, your weather yep all right okay this is a big one that john i need you to step in on this one because well, the way you break is different. Well, the most important thing, people think about driving an RV and the size of it, but it's not really you driving the RV. You'll figure that stuff out. You'll figure out how to go wide. What most people don't understand is, is that the biggest problem with a big RV and the weight is stopping that RV. So it is so, so important. One of the, re the bigger your RV, you should have a transmission brake, right? Or what's also known as an exhaust brake. This is great. Um, we have one in our truck. Most new trucks have them. Um, you should have your trailer brake, right? Uh, to pinch on the side. You should know where everything is to stop your vehicle quickly as fast as you can. And the problem is, is it's not going to be very fast. So you have to leave a lot of room behind the vehicle that is in front of you guys. You have to stay way, way back. Yeah. You got to be you don't have to be uptight, right? But you have to be extremely vigilant, vigilant, mm -hmm. and you can't be looking at the scenes. Yeah. You need to be focusing, especially when you get into city traffic. Yeah. You really need your head needs to be on a swivel. People, just cut in front. People don't realize, right, that you are a big rig and can't stop fast, and they will cut right out in front of you and slam the brakes on. Yeah. So just drive defensively and stay way, way back. Always assume that. The person in front, in front of you is going to make a mistake. Yeah. And that you need to. Could you stop on a dime? The second piece, guy, and this is so, so important. Always be watching your rear view mirrors constantly. Oh, yeah. You should be cycling through your rear view mirrors, your rear view mirrors, cameras, if you've got them in there. Yep. So that if something goes wrong quickly, you, know you, you already drive. know where there's no traffic. So you can go right or you can go left. So always have your plan B and be constantly calculating that plan as you're driving down the road. Yeah. You know, your job is to drive. Yes, you can have a conversation with your wife. We used to like to listen to music yeah. when we drove. Yeah, we had our jeans. But my, my job was to protect my family as I was driving. And so I had the right safety equipment. So that, that gave me peace of mind to relax me. I knew my tires were being watched. Mm -hmm. I knew if anything went wrong, it would get I would get a warning. Mm -hmm. And my job was to focus like a laser, almost like a meditation. Yeah. And this is my job right now. Yeah. And I'm going to keep us safe. Well, and to piggyback off that, and, and this is my experience, some of the most beautiful locations that we drove through involved some of the, the most dangerous breaking situations, some of the mountains and the steep grades. Um, and it's really because people think that you can just ride on the brake like a normal car and you're going to, you're going to fry your brakes. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially like on I-10 or like, you know, really hot places. So you, you need to, you need to be mindful of that. But sometimes, especially in the mountains and very beautiful views are where you really need to be paying attention to the yeah. road because there's twists, turns and, yeah. and going downhill. You can be going 85 miles an hour in your RV very, very easily and not realize And it. you can't slow it down. Remember, you're on a road that you've never been on before. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the newer the truck, the better the electronics, the better the braking systems that are on it. Yeah. We had a, 29, a 2017? 18. 2018 GMC yeah. that had an exhaust brake. That's why I picked the Allison transmission. So when I start to even touch my brakes, the transition will kick in and downshift the truck automatically to hold it there. Mm -hmm. One of the things I loved about, especially with new trucks, and Ford has this, Dodge has this, you can set the cruise control and it will hold you within two to three miles per hour of going uphill and downhill. Mm -hmm. 
you got to be super careful not to start getting carried away when you're going downhill. Just stay way back and use your transmission. Use all your tools to stop. Yeah. And again, just have an emergency plan. If something goes wrong, you're going to pinch. You're going to hit. You're going to drop. You're going to do everything you possibly can to stop that rig. Exactly. Well, and, and that ties into the next one, which is know your speed limit because you think I'm going to check on her. Real uh, quick. Okay. So you think I'm just talking about the speed limit of the road you're on. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Tires have different speed ratings. And one of the things we noticed, especially in our truck being a newer truck, was that it was so easy to speed. And ironically, the truck drove better when we were towing. The drive was smoother. So when we were towing, it was very easy to speed in the RV. And those tires, especially the RV tires, are not rated. Most of them are like up to 55, 65 miles an hour. And, and it's really, really easy to speed. So you want to know what the speed limit is, obviously, on the road you're driving, but what your tires are rated. That's a huge one right there. All right. Next one. <laughs> All right, John. What? The next one. <laughs> avoid bridges. Just avoid them all together. <laughs> Remember, guys, she did this. I had nothing to do with this. Absolutely nothing. No. Well, he he reviewed it. I was like, John, I need you to review this curriculum. And you would have thought I'd asked him, like, John, I need to poke your eyes out, you know, and rub salt in them. And and he's like, I, we don't, I don't need to look at that until Saturday. I was like, no, you need to look at it. So I kept, and then he actually looked at it and he was like, this is pretty good. Honey. Yeah, it is. It's It's pretty, it's pretty good. But we have a trick for bridges. Okay, what's your trick? The trick is that if a semi can go through, chances are we can too. Yeah. <laughs> so, so major interstates are great. They have GPSs, guys, that actually um, you can plug in your weight. You can mm -hmm. plug in. There's actually apps out there where yep. you can plug in your height, your width, your weight. And supposedly these apps will not allow you to go the wrong way. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's for a trucker's app. Now, yeah. we've had one of those apps that was horrible. Do you yeah. remember? Oh, I, yeah. I mean, there's, there's I a few remember, that do it. It's horrendous. Yeah. And so you just really do your homework on whatever app or GPS system you buy. Yeah. There are some really good Garmin's out there that have um, the, the weight, your height. You can plug in and just let the, let the GPS doing that. But remember, always double check everything. Yep. One of the things Mercedes and I did was I liked Google Maps and Mercedes liked Safari Apple, Maps, yeah. Apple Maps. So we'd always have two when we and we'd the ladies see, would fight. Right. And then we in the background, we always had a weather app going. Yeah. Right. So that if any was anything was a we we'd, we'd be warned about that. And then I had my paper map. <laughs> <laughs> she loved paper maps. I'll tell you what, Mercedes cool. was one of the best co-pilots. Travel day. It was um, fun. And we we always loved travel day. Yeah. It was a little stressful, it right? Was stressful, but, but it we was loved exciting. it because we were a family, we're a team, and yeah. we're going on to the next place. It's not yeah. to us. We'd crank the music. It was like, okay, on to the next beautiful place. Mm -hmm. And America is so, so beautiful and filled with so many magical places yeah. that it's just like you're a little kid again. Exactly. You know, this just is exploring. A great point. The height signs can be up to two inches off. Mm -hmm. I That is so true. Like the bridges, just avoid them. Just go like 20 miles out of your way. Just <laughs> avoid bridges. And remember, if you're paying attention, a bridge is going to tick if the sign's not broken down or... It's, the, side, the bridge is going to give you a warning of the bridge's height a mile before you actually get to the bridge. Yeah. That's why it's so important to keep your head on a, on a, on, on you know, swivel. on a swivel, just constantly be measuring and looking at everything around you. Your job is to drive safely. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And speaking of driving safely, have manners. And this is what I mean about the manners. Um, in very rare cases, do we belong on the left lane? And this is a hill I'm like, not going to stand on firm. <laughs> as an RV, look at his face. No, as an RV and typically the speeds we're going, you know, why are we, I, I just can't stand it when people take the left lane, you know, to go under the speed limit, it feels like. Yeah. So I, have manners and, on the road. And I don't like it either. And that's, she's talking, Mercedes is talking about, because I'm the one that complains about it. If I see an RV sitting out in the passing lane and not passing, yeah. it really aggravates me because it just gives us a bad name. Yeah. Right. Um, I really believe that most RVers have really are really, really kind. They're very, very giving. And we all have manners. Yep. Um, we're good people. And uh, and but of course, there's always one in the bag that's not. And so just um, always be considerate of those around you. 
I have been on a uh, been on the road before and I had somebody in a fifth wheel drive by me at 85, not 90 miles per hour. That really made me angry because that person is putting so many other people in danger. Yeah. I've seen rigs sit out in the passing lane and block miles and miles of traffic rather than yeah. to just slide over, exactly. you know? Um, and so just have, have some patience. I mean, have, have some. Well, etiquette and the other etiquette is at trucks, truck stops as well. Um, sometimes truck stops have areas specifically for RVs. Sometimes you're sharing areas with the truckers. I felt like there was a kinship among truckers and RVers, especially being so large. We would get gas at the same gas stations as the truckers. Oftentimes when we would overnight at truck stops, we would have truckers around us. But don't be fooled, guys. There's also some truckers that do not like RVers. Well, sometimes period. RVers most of them do. The RVers don't know how to do it. Yep. And these guys are working. Yep. You know, and just remember that mm -hmm. these guys are working for a living. So always yield to them. Let them get what they need yep. um, and learn proper etiquette when you're at these places. Fill up and get out of the way. Mm -hmm. Let these guys get to work. It looks like a lot of people are agreeing. Use yeah. the right lane on the hill. Yes. <laughs> and then this is a great tip. So on bridges, you can actually hit the top of your RV. Yes, Donna. That's exactly why the first thing on this on this up video was know your RV. You need to know how tall you are so that when you see that bridge approaching and it says it's 11-2, you need to know. If and you you're 11-6. Yeah. Can you yeah. clear that? Or what if you're 11-1? So go take a tape measure. <laughs> Actually look at it. Don't trust the specs. Mm -hmm. Okay. Take a tape measure and see what your total height is. Add two inches to that mm -hmm. and then write it on a small piece of paper and stick it on your dashboard Yep. so that you know exactly your height. Exactly. Exactly. All right. What is the next one? Let's see. We've talked enough about manners. Oh, gas stations. We just kind of talked about this. Yeah. The gas stations is a big one, though, because of the tail swing. We, we know people that have really wrecked Done their some RV. serious damage. Yeah. yeah. Remember our friends in Florida? Yes. The poor, the poor people. This was this trip they had planned for so long. They're retired. This was like a big deal for them to make this trip to Florida. Guys, there's some people that just should not be driving RVs. That's all I can tell you. And these are really kind, beautiful people, but yeah. they just continue to make big mistakes and cost themselves so much money. Yeah, no, it's, it's true. And the thing about the gas stations, it's not just the height. It's also the turns. It's also other people. Like there's 50 things you got to watch out for in the gas station. Just again, head on a swivel yep. and measuring everything before you make that turn. And, we, and when you get in trouble because you didn't plan ahead and then you have to find gas, yep. you got to come in super, super, super slow. This is probably the biggest tip I'll ever be able to give you. Well, there's, there's one more I'm going to give you at the end. I think the best tip you'll ever get from driving. I'll, I'll hold that one for the end. Cool. But I just forgot it. <laughs> Going slow, like oh, going slow, slow, yeah, yeah, <laughs> guys, go slow, 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 slow. Enjoy yeah. the journey, yeah. You know, enjoy the ride. Go super, super slow. Yep. When you're coming off the highway, go super, super slow. Yeah. Let people behind you get pissed off. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't make a difference. Go he's, super slow. He said when you're coming off the highway, not on the highway. Yes. Either <laughs> or. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but yeah, especially in the in the gas station because there's pressure of other people there. So you're thinking, Oh, I got to get out of the way. But if you feel like you got to rush, you'll make a bad decision. Right. Feeling the pressure of people's opinions that don't even really matter. Yep. You just need to stay safe. And personally, I'll just say this. My biggest pet peeve is somebody that goes on an on ramp, right? Emerged on ramp and stops yeah. to look if there was tra if there's traffic there, you should be don't as you be go. that guy. You yeah. should be picking up speed. Like you're taking off like a jet. Mm -hmm. You want to just kind of smooth into that traffic again. It can be, that was, you were a little bit worried about that, Oh yeah. but you did really good. I'm, I'm pushing her, pick yeah. up speed, pick up speed. And yeah. she did good. She, yeah. she worked her way through it, but <laughs> just, just try to not get in other people's way. Yeah. Guys, don't worry. All of your super chats are going to our marriage counseling because John taught me how to drive an RV. <laughs> Yeah. No, but it's it's true. And and the gas stations, you know, it's almost like anytime you're doing something that's out of the norm, because it's easy to take it for granted in a, in a car and regular vehicle, but boy, in the RV, and then you feel guilty if you're blocking people, but don't let yourself feel guilty. Just do yeah. what you got to do. Yeah, just do what you got to do. Yep. Oh, I love this comment, Chip. Thank you. Slow is pro. Slow is pro. That's good. That's good stuff right there. All right. So the next one, 
take lots of breaks. This is super important. It's that rule, 300 miles of three hours mm -hmm. um, or yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Mercedes and I, over the many miles we traveled around the country, I made a couple of big mistakes. One of them was by driving 17 hours one night. Yeah. Big, big mistake. Really big mistake. I was putting my family in serious danger by doing that. Mm -hmm. The rule of thumb is to go so slow as pro. Back to what Chip just said, right, guys? Mm -hmm. You should only be driving three or four hours a day. Mm -hmm. um, don't push it. Go slow. You Can you do... Can you do more than that? Yeah. What's even better is if you've got a partner that can share driving with you. Yeah. Because then you can cover long distances a lot, you know. Well, and, and I think it's because remember the road trips that you've taken in a car? RVing is not quite like that. No. If we're road tripping in a car, oh, we can drive like, I can drive 10 hours, you could drive 10 hours, but it's different in a car. But if you're RVing road trip, it's, it's a more exhausting kind of drive. It takes longer. When you're in a car, if the GPS tells you 45 minutes, you'll probably get there in 45 minutes. When you're in an RV and the GPS tells you 45 minutes, you'll get there in an hour. And really, so much more <laughs> depends on traffic when you're in an RV. Because again, your head's on a swivel. Mm -hmm. So you're constantly paying attention and making calculations of that this go, if this guy does this and this guy does this, I've got to do this. Yep. Right. And so the, it is a little bit more stress. Again, I was never intimidated by driving my rig, but it was stressful driving the rig once the first I got past time. three or four or five hours, you know, and but I love driving the rig. I love parking the rig. I'm good at it. Yeah. I really can truly say I am really good at it. I know. And you park other people's rigs too. Yeah. And I park other people's <laughs> rigs for them now that we own the RV park. Guys, I'm blown away by how many people. They really, truly can't drive an RV. It's And they don't want to learn. Right? And they, they, they just have no interest in learning, yeah. you know? But actually, you just said something that really inspired me. I think the first time is the scariest because once I drove the RV for the first time, I'm not saying I'm not scared of it anymore. Like, it's a big deal. But I'm not as, oh, I can never do that, you know? It's like, oh, I can do that. It's a little intimidating and I need to get better at it. But it just breaks the initial trepidation. And I, when you talk about the first time you saw the RV and you just had that moment where you're yeah, like, yeah. whoa, that's really bad. And then I, <laughs> I started at a point early on in the video and I got off the point. But Mercedes, there's 20 years difference between us guys. I know you One you of the biggest fears for me <laughs> was if anything ever happened to me and they had to get out of it. Yeah. They had to get themselves out of the situation. That's why I was so forceful with Mercedes. You got to learn how to drive this yeah. rig. You got to learn how. To, it was only for your good and Sage's good. Yeah. And I really believe that if you are a partner in a rig, you sh you need to learn how to drive that rig in case of an emergency. I agree with that statement. Period, 100% and stop. I, I agree with that statement that it's not fair that he has to kill all the spiders and do all the driving. I need to at least do a little bit of driving. That's not the point. <laughs> no, yeah. I was making a joke. Yeah. But but for safety reasons, what if you twist your ankle and, and you know, you can't accelerate or use your foot anymore with driving? <laughs> like, it, it can be any stupid little thing that, you know, it, it'd be kind of scary if, if all of our lives were in my hands, especially in the mountains, you mm. know, and some crazy, some crazy drives. We've been through some places in the mountains where I don't, I, especially with the, with the pivoting and staying in the lane and it's it's, it's kind yeah, of scary. six seven six seven percent slopes guys mm -hmm. and you get your rig going and you because you i mean hardest piece is the america is so beautiful that you start getting lost in the scenery and mercedes and i have a deal when i drive she looks at the scenery and gets photos and videos and i focus on the road that's not true okay because he's like look how beautiful this is and i'm like looking at the road like this and i'm like look at the road look at the road he's like why aren't you appreciating the beauty and i'm like well i get madder because i can't look at him like are you looking at this but he is and she's like this <laughs> look at front of you. <laughs> but we got to keep it real so sorry. <laughs> all right so so take lots of breaks people oh the other thing you know, the rest stops are kind of conveniently designed, in my opinion, to give you a break when you kind of need one, but you don't know it yet. A lot of rest stops will be 50 um, miles apart or something like that. So we will almost always take the rest stop unless we had just stopped for gas. Um, even if we're not necessarily feeling tired. We do a safety check every time we pull over. Yeah. And I do a safety check. I, do a, the I, I actually caught a bubble. That yeah. the TPMS would never have, it was a blow up. Yep. TPMS is going to pick that up. Yep. It's one thing it can pick up. It yep. can take up the heat, fire, 
yep. um, pressure. Um, but this was a big bubble and I caught it and it saved our butts. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So always do a walkthrough. Yep. All right. And then um, the next one. Okay. We might, people might not like this one. <laughs> Lead when parking. <laughs> this is going to be controversial because this is to each his own or to each her own. Mm -hmm. I do not like people helping me park. I'm just that guy. And I've got, you know, friends, friends in here are the same way. I'm the guy that likes to be left alone while I'm sitting up and breaking down. Yeah. I'm the guy that likes to be left alone to put my rig where I want it without having any pressure of somebody else on the outside telling me what to do. Mm -hmm. The two times in our lives, and it was both in Arizona, no, one in Las Vegas, one in Arizona, yeah. somebody insisted when we checked into the park that they had to put me away. And it was the most stressful both times that I'd ever done. And after the first one, I learned a valid tip, though. Yes. Because I was letting this guy tell me what to do. And it was my rig. It's my responsibility to put it where I want to put it. Yeah. And it was a lot of yelling and a lot of screaming. Go, and stop, go, this guy go, was unbelievable. Go, yeah, this guy was unbelievable. <laughs> but it taught me something. You are going to go to some parks and they're going to say, we have to put you away. Yeah. They're going to send a ranger with you and they're going to help you park your rig. Okay, I would highly suggest that you take control. You take the lead. And you tell the ranger what to look at. So, okay, I want you right there. And I want you to tell me when I start getting close to that. And and, and when I did that, it worked out a lot better than it did the first guy when I was letting, letting him lead me. Because that first guy was like, he put us right next to a tree and there was a slide right there. So he was like, there you go. You're good. And it's like, you're dumb. Like, no, you just. And so he left, and in five minutes, John was was perfect. Well, as but soon as he left, yeah, I was, was fine. Yeah, but so you lead when parking, and and here's what's tricky though. So, if I were trying to park a rig, and somebody said, "Do you want me to park it for you?" I would probably say yes, <laughs> because I don't know what I'm doing, right? I would probably, I'm like, eh, that looks like a good driver. Sure, go ahead. <laughs> but I, it is my responsibility to learn. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and in the event that you do need help, that's fine. Like ask for the help you need and get the help you need. But in the event that you are like John, that you want to, you know, have them check your blind spot. Okay. Stand there and tell me my pivot. Tell me that, that this, um, these also, I'm going to, Oh, this is bad. You're but such I'm a say, pro at all. No, this, babe. No, stop, stop. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Husbands and wives Bites. trying to park the RV. It's fun to watch. <laughs> we literally would love watching husband and wives on the weekends come into parks and help each other park. You want to talk about some fights. Don't we? And we've had people get really upset with us because we, they, like, you boyers, right? We, it's just, we just watch them. And, it's like when yeah. I was a younger kid, I used to like to get out of the boat ramp and see all these rookies put their boats in and just make a mess of it, right? It was the same thing. You're just waiting for the crash, right? Yep. And so we've seen some really funny stuff. I think what I would tell you is, is that if, if you want to help somebody park, ask them, mm -hmm. can I help you park? Yeah, don't would you like me sick. to help you? Yes. I will always say, no, I got this. I'd prefer to be by myself. Yeah. But ask them. Mm -hmm. Ask them if they need the help. Yeah. And um, I think when it comes to the husband and wife teams, there's two options you got. The first one is a backup camera. <laughs> but the next option that you have is somebody needs to be the leader. So like when John would ask me for something, he would say, I want you to stand over here and make sure my tail swing doesn't swing to this thing. So I had one little job. I wasn't telling him where to put the whole RV. I was just checking this one little space and I would, now we did get into fights over like, well, you have two inches left. No, this is, you're fine. And, and so ultimately the way we fix that is that whenever there was an issue, John just gets out and looks for himself. Yeah, yeah, and and I do that a lot actually. Yep. I, I, I and again, I I go into super high slow mo when I come into a spot. I drive super slow. Whether I'm going in a gas station park, I am going like like a snail because mm -hmm. I'm making my plan. What am I going to put? What do I need to position my rig? Yeah. And so when I'm going in to park my rig, I might even do it another turn around once I see my sight, right? Because yeah. I just get out of position. Yep. But everything slows down. Ignore anybody around you. Mm -hmm. You know, want some help? No, thank you. I'm good. All yeah. set. Yeah, I'm really excited to set up. But please, just I'm good. Yeah. Well, and, and the other piece, too, is that people would try to tell you, you've got this much space. You're fine. you got this space. 
And ultimately, I, I can't tell you how many times I'd look at John and I'd say, just go look at it for yourself. And then as soon as he you saw You don't have himself, to tell me to look at it. No, I go look at well, it. it. It was just like, as soon as you look at it for yourself. One thing I don't do is I don't ask Mercedes to go look at it. Why? I, because the t when you we do, we got fights. We got fights. Yeah. So true. I mean, my God, guys. I mean, she'd be like, stop, stop. And then I get out of the rig and I go back there and I'm like 10 feet away. I'm like, honey, I got another 10 feet. That is True, that's completely that's, true. It's not true. completely true. His, his pants just burst into flames. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. And it's so good that we can laugh at this because there's nothing worse, especially on a holiday weekend. Like now people go off and you, you work so hard. You, you spend this money to go camping, to rejuvenate and put, you know, charge that battery. And, and what's your first experience is trying to park the RV and you fight with your spouse. <laughs> it wrecks the weekend. It's the funniest thing. Yeah. So it's so, so important to be able to laugh at this and, and to just, just let it slide. And I think it's easier when you're full time because we have so many parking experiences that, you know. And then, then again, we're not saying this is with every wife and husband team, no, no. guys. We some also see good. some good teams. Yeah. Um, really good teams. Jason and Delenn, what a good team. Yeah. What I loved about Jason and Delenn when they came into Thunder King, number one, Jason is how to drive that rig. He's a full timer. Most full timers know how to, because they, they get plenty of experience. <laughs> they get plenty of experience. The part time is what you got to watch out for. Yep. But they came in and then I walked up right and just watch them and i said delaney you good and she's like we're good we got this and, and it almost said step the step off this is yeah. our space kindly <laughs> yeah and they, and they both had their walkie talkies and they they did it perfectly so there are good man and husband and wife teams yeah there's also some that just aren't too good at it and mercedes and i are not good team when it comes to parking we're a great team for everything else, right? Yeah, no, we're she's yeah. My, she's my co-pilot. She's yeah. fantastic at finding stops and looking at a, looking up ahead yeah. and watching the and monitoring the weather and making sure. But when it comes to right parking, exit. no, yeah. you sit here, don't get in the truck. Yeah, <laughs> don't get out of the truck no, until I get it. Because here's get it what, here's what happens if you don't take control over that situation. It'll, it'll wreck and then it takes longer and longer and longer. And then you'll feel pressure because someone's waiting on you and more and more people are watching. And, and Oh, the and pressure builds. It's like making that three foot pot when a thousand people are watching you. It's hard to do it. Yep. So I don't like people watching me. And that's why like when we watch people on the weekends, we hide inside, we hide inside <laughs> and peek so out the blinds know. and we laugh. Oh my God. We've gotten some great video of people doing some funny, funny stuff, you guys. Yep. Well, all right. So uh, I think it's time for some questions. Uh, we have Janie. Thank you, by the way, for moderating this. She has been. Uh, <laughs> My wife lets me hit stuff. <laughs> Art Vance. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Good woman. Good woman. All right. So now we are going to go through some questions. Janie's been uh, grabbing your questions, but please put questions in all caps so that they stand. If you out. have a question, all caps, guys. All right. So the first one. Deborah, um, I have to ask you guys a question. My husband was reviewing our unit for an outside generator. Unfortunately, he reversed the wires when he plugged it in, and suddenly everything started popping. Ooh. I don't yeah. think that's a question to. That's not good. Um, yeah. I'm so sorry. Well, but, well, just have everything checked. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, everything that was supposed to protect the system did. Yep. Um, Jeff Steele has a question. What is Jake breaks? I don't know. I, I don't know. All, All right. right. Nadine Brown. I'm surprised someone hasn't come up with a bumper sticker to warn others that if they cut you off, they're at risk of two twenty thousand 20,000 pounds hitting them in the rear. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's perceived as a threat, but that's true. Like <laughs> cutting me off is not smart. Although some of the semis now have some, some things that say don't, I, it looks I like, it looks wide. like a Jake break is the exact same thing as your exhaust break. It's oh. just your transmission is helping to slow down yeah. your engine. Actually you'll see in some, some cities you'll see that they don't allow you to, to down look down to downshift on the highway. Um, late at night, like after 11 o'clock, they don't oh. want you to, cause it just, it makes your engine rev up to help slow it down. I got it. Okay. Scott Westfall. How do you find the tire speed rating? Well, funny you should ask. Right because, on the tire, man. Yeah. And we actually did a class on uh, one of our newbie classes was just on how to find that info on the tire, but everything you need to know is right on the tire. 
Everything, <laughs> believe it or not, everything you need to know is right on your tire. Mercedes did a great class on that. I was 35 years old when I learned that, by the way, people, that everything you need to But know your tire will tell you it's max speed rating, and a lot of tires are only 55 miles an hour. Yeah. You know, and these you are people that fly by you at 85. Yeah. You wouldn't think it would be so low, but I guess because most speed limits on highways are up to 75 in some areas, but yep. Thank you, Renee Bowes. Oh, thank you. Thank Can't you, wait to you. meet you, honey. All right. So on the bridges. Oh, wait, we got Donna's question. OK, do you have a CB radio uh, to use with the traffic? No, we don't have a CB radio. Um, we're looking into that, but uh, but we don't. Well, we just bought three channels for Thunder Canyon. Mm -hmm. So we have our own. We bought a license from the SEC um that allows us to run three channels in the park now and so we have our own private radio system that's pretty cool um, which is really really cool we've got six radios we're adding a few more if you guys don't know we've got i mean thunder canyon is the bomb we are doing great here everybody that comes to thunder canyon to visit we're open mm -hmm. and everybody's having a blast most people are staying an extra few days than they typically want to and then, then when they leave they cannot wait to get back yeah, which Carl asks the question, which membership do you recommend for first timers? If you 99 have, bucks. Yeah, well, but yeah. if you haven't bought your gear yet, if you haven't bought the TST, the the um, Fire, uh, the Nomads and the Founders get really amazing pricing on those that are store. So if you haven't bought your gear yet, you might want to look at an upgraded membership. If you're a diehard fan, you might want to do the Zooms and, and all the fun stuff mm -hmm. that the Founders do. Um, if you just want to camp the park, our guys, founders yeah. guys is our family. Yeah. Um, they're... these are the people that have taken us in their arms with love prayer and lifted us up. And none of this would have happened without our founders. Yeah. None of this would have our happened. Founding members. Our founding members, are the ones that supported us. We don't go to YouTube for money to raise money. Yeah. Our people support us and lift us up. Yeah. And it, it, if you are a newbie and you want to become part of a community, yeah. an RV community, join the RV Oz squad. Because you will save you a ton of money on the products um, that you'll need to get started. And Mercedes and I, we don't talk about a lot of products, yeah. but we know the best products out there. We're not and the product channel. <laughs> yeah, we're not the product channel. But uh, we'll save you 50, 60% off yeah. products you really do need. Yeah. And this is a good one, Gary. Are there ways to get cameras around your RV? So mm -hmm. our um, second sandpiper was like pre-wired for a surround system. And we were able to um, to get that Furion surround system. And it was so cool because the back up camera was awesome. But having the side views was yeah, so cool. Yeah, it, it's awesome. The, the only problem we had with it is, is it was Furion. Furion yeah, so stinks. One of them flew off. Yeah, one of them flew off. China. They're called marker lights. Yes. And so you actually can go out and replace the marker lights that are already on your rig with a camera and plug right in mm -hmm. to the same spot. They're wireless. They're great. Um, God, I, we, we, I absolutely 100% positive that you need a backup camera. Mm -hmm. um, and that 99% of the time or is all I need. Or no, I'm I'm kidding. Kidding. <laughs> Invest in a backup camera, guys. Absolutely. I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. Hey, uh, Chip, are you from Massachusetts? Oh my mm. gosh. No. No? I don't think Chip's from Mass. Is I don't he? know. It's, sorry. I think note. he's, I thought he was living up in Chicago or somewhere up there. My bad. Side I note. Could, I could be wrong. Uh, uh, here I am. Um, I'm sorry for what I said while parking our rig. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 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 that just, that's just that's just that's just perfect that is so true no man we already made our membership cost back in the savings good good i'm so glad yeah because we want people to like squeeze the juice out of the membership you yeah know what i mean that's yeah. what we want and plus our no our, our founder membership they we, we give you a year's worth of telemedicine right and televet yeah. um we give you as much as we can and again we're growing this membership as big as we possibly can um, but if you just want to come to Thunder Canyon, hang out with us for a week, sit around a fire, go out to Howard's to d yeah. dinner with us one night, 99 bucks will get you in the park. But it is a private membership. Uh-oh. We got some trouble here, people. What? Oh. Doris Matthews is oh, from Mass. Doris. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. All these all these people from Massachusetts, I'm outnumbered. We had a lady from Massachusetts call. Hey, Cher um, Johnson's here. Hey, Cher. Um, it was so hilarious. Um. I couldn't understand her. And I was like, John, you need to translate it. And she's like, well, where are you from? I'm like, Colorado. She's like, oh. <laughs> but it was so funny how uh, different regions, the, the, the 
accents are so I am out. just starting to learn how to understand what these Alabama Alabanians I don't know Alabamans I Oh. Bammy, Bamas. Yeah. Well, I, I just really struggle with some of them understanding what they're saying to me, but I'm getting better at it. Yeah. Well, it's it's so funny, and we're we're incorporating a lot more y'alls into our our day to day. Yeah. It's yeah. it's pretty funny. But Doris, yeah, my mother's making supper. Yeah. Accent, it's wicked pizza. <laughs> okay. I'm from Alabama, y'all. Hey, yeah, that's John. His new name is Farmer John because <laughs> of the chickens and everything. So we are in great shape with the questions. We're all caught up. Yeah. If thinking about changing from gas to diesel, should I go through a? Oh, don't get John started. A CDL class. I think every Everyone. anybody that's driving anything over twenty eight feet, I think you should. I think you should have a um a CDL. I think if you're d pulling a trailer and you're more than thirty feet, you got to have a CDL. Um, and it's it's because I've seen some horrific accidents and God, the people they just. It's not their fault. They just think they fall in love with the idea of RVing um, and they think it's just easy. But there's a lot of skill that goes into taking a big rig and parking it on a dime. Yeah. You know, some of these older campgrounds have really tight spots. Mm -hmm. They're not wide roads. And so RVs can really get themselves in a pretty big trouble. Oh, I, you know? I, I completely agree. So I am, yes, I would get, say, get a CDL. Or if you're not going to get a CDL because you don't have to, most people won't if they don't have to, go down to an empty parking lot and just practice. Set some cones up. You know, seriously, set some cones up and just start playing with that rig, backing it up, driving it forward. Just just practice, practice, practice. Yep. we got a couple questions. Are you fixing to yet? <laughs> Classic car travel. You're from Alabama. You get it. It's Alabama. Bamians. Alabamians. Alabamians. Yep, Alabamians. Alabamians. Hey, Carlos, Forgive me, please. Forgive yeah. me. Hey, Carlos and Edie. Yeah, parking the spouse is always interesting. That's code for like it stinks. <laughs> <laughs> That's code for. <laughs> We're just not good at that. That's not our talent. And so I think there's maybe been once or twice I've asked you to park and then I never did it again. Never oh. did it. Again. And it was that time. Ask me to help. I've it, never parked. Huh? No, 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 no. I said, ask me to help park. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. No, I thought you said that I like park. I was like, I've never parked the RV. I can't even, I I'm the straightaways. <laughs> that's where, that's where I help. Oh, yep. Salem chips from Salem. Salem, Massachusetts, huh? Yeah. Wow. I know. I didn't know that chip. Yep. So there are RVA trainers out there you can hire to help you learn to back up. Well, that's what we want to do here at Thunder Canyon. Eventually, we want to turn this into a school and help people. Yeah. So one of the visions we had for Thunder Canyon was to be the first RV 101 park. Yeah. Meaning that we want, we've already got two rigs here now where you can rent an RV. Yeah. Um, and so I don't know if you guys know this, but you go rent an RV, it's going to cost you three, four thousand dollars for a expensive. week. To, it's expensive. Yeah. Well, Mercedes and I are renting our rig. We got another member here, Mark. He's renting his rig out. Yeah. So we're going to set up school for people that want to get into the RV lifestyle, but want to learn properly how to do it. We're talking about driving. We're talking about emptying your tanks. We're talking about the whole curriculum, probably a two, three, four day class. Um, and so we're super excited about that. We do think we will be the first in the country to do it. Um, it's going to take us some time to get there, but we think Thunder Canyon will definitely be a great place to come learn how to RV. Yeah, this is this is pretty. Cool. And nothing is better than RV Odd Squad members. We're the most giving community on the planet, you guys. Yep. And I want to call out um, Cliff uh, Bank Bankston, all the way from Sweden. Sweden. I lost, I lost his comment, but I think that is so cool that we have to uh, throw him some. Uh, some props we got a network guy here from denmark is connie from denmark or? i don't know all those norwegian countries like no way i think it's maybe countries. it's norway all anyways sorry connie i didn't catch it scandinavia is that the region all of those norwegian countries it's called skin okay anyways um <laughs> on that note <laughs> on that note i think uh, uh sign us up for the 101 class i love that Thank you, John and Janie. You guys will be our guinea pigs. <laughs> we'll practice on you. We'll practice on you. All right. We're 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 caught up on questions, sweetheart. All right, guys. Well, we are at 59 minutes, 10 seconds. So This has been so much fun. We've got to make tomorrow's video. Yeah. Wish us luck. <laughs> <laughs>
But uh, we want to thank you guys for all the love, support, and prayers, as usual. Um, if you haven't come out to Thunder Canyon, come on out to Thunder Canyon. Come visit us out here, you guys. Spend a few days and see how absolutely beautiful this is. Mm -hmm. um, what makes Thunder Canyon better than anything else is the community that we're attracting. Mm -hmm. I mean, our community, people that are becoming close, close friends that just met yesterday. Mm -hmm. We're attracting just uh, like-minded people. So... If you haven't visited, please come visit. We will give you more information. If you're looking to rent an RV, come fly we into Thunder rentals, Canyon. We've got yeah. two rentals now. So yep. um, we haven't advertised that yet, but you guys will have the first shot. Um, we will send an email out to our members um, uh, renting out uh, our rig and then also Mark's. Yep. Good stuff. So right. have an awesome day, guys. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>